Welcome back. So for this next tutorial, and as I told you, it's going to be a short one. We just want to, I want to show you how this material can work with your particle systems, right? So content browser, just create a new particle system. Let's name it P cast and enter. I'm having some trouble with my hands, so excuse me if I am slow, but, uh, Let's here go on, 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 on our material. Rows, so you're selecting it. You don't need to select the instance, just the main. The instance was just an example. And paste it here. Okay. You can see... Uh... Okay, I'm having some trouble <laughs> with my hand, sorry. There we go. We don't want this velocity upwards, so we just erase it. We want it to be like... Uh, a magic casting ability, right? And we want it on the floor. We don't want it rotating with our camera. So right click. Which one was it? Orientation, log axis. And log it on C, I think. Yeah, it's on C. So let's zoom in and see what's going on so far. Okay. Now, obviously, we don't want it to spawn so fast, right? Right now it is spawning 20. Is it per second? Yeah, per second. So zero. We want this to be a burst. So yeah, just uh, one. Okay, you can see it appears, then it leaves, right? The lifetime is fine. We don't care really. The color, perhaps we could make it uh, so when it is one, it starts to fade out here. Here on zero, and that's better. Okay. So what I wanted to show you is this. Um, we want to be able to modify this parameter, the opacity, in our particle system, right? Because this parameter here is the one that controls uh, the gradient shrinking and expanding. So in order to do that, we need to create a dynamic parameter. So right click, dynamic parameter, and let's hook this one in here. We can erase this. And let's name this. Let's just name it opacity, although it, it's not really opacity. But let's just name it opacity. Okay. Or you could also name it clip. Yeah, it's fine. So um, we go back here. And we need to right click and select parameter dynamic. And through here, we will be able to control it. So as you can see here, it is the first parameter, the red one that we are modifying it. And if you check it, it has as name known, right? You just need to right click and refresh. Now it's named no opacity. And right now it is, uh, a solid number, right? If we put two, if we put three, you can see how it starts shrinking. But we want to make an animation, right? And in order to make an animation, we need to make a curve. How do you make a curve? You need to go here, constant curve. So we expand it. We need to open up two points. These two. So at second one, maybe I want it to be one. And on the final stage of the particle, perhaps it's a five. You can see how it is shrinking, right? Uh, let's say maybe two. Mm. Will this be 0.5 or zero? Mm. Yeah, okay, it makes sense. All right. Maybe let's make it uh, live a little longer. So constant. What if it lives two seconds? And then here we make the duration of the emitter two seconds too. Hmm. Let's make it inverted actually. So here two and here zero. Okay, not quite. Perhaps it's one over here. Mm. 
Vai? Hmm. Oh. I wonder what's going on here that it's not going as fast as maybe on the second of the particle it is 0.5. Yep. That looks better. That certainly looks better, although I want it to be smaller, perhaps. So what about 10? Or 15? Yeah, you could keep on increasing it if that's what you want. Then maybe 10. Or 5. Yeah, let's say it's 5. And it, it also depends on the kind of texture that you use, right? It looks kind of awkward because of the of the choice I made. Uh, so yeah, we, we have uh, control now of when it expands or contracts. Uh, maybe something extra that we can do is create a, or is it a size by life? And let's say that at the start, this is 0.8. And at the end of the particle, it's going to be a 2. Hold on, no, 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 that's, that's too much. 1.2, 1.2, Hmm. It is not convincing at all. Maybe it just needs to appear way quicker. Maybe one here, it's way too much, maybe 0.2. Although you can see that it's not moving in motion with the dynamic that we already put. So perhaps 0.4. Wait one. Okay, zero point five. Okay, maybe we can modify the dynamic now and make it shorter. What about point two? I don't feel enough force. Let's just set this on one. And put this back on one, two. What I'm trying to, yeah, this is. It's slightly, slightly better. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. What I want to achieve here is, I want some kind of uh, a force, like um, some extra oomph on the on the cast. So. Uh, what do we do? Do we just increase the out value and then we reduce it? Does it need to be 1.2? 1.1? Yeah, this is looking way better. This is looking way better. We certainly need to add one more of this though. Perhaps on 0.5, this could be 1. No, one is too much. 1.14. Mm. What about 1.4? Or 1.6? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This could be. Um, what if we make it rotate too? So rotation, I think. No, no, it's rotation rate. First of all, um, let me see. Okay, no, obviously this is too much. Maybe point one, point one. Okay, and we can do a rotation rate for life. And at see at at maybe point three. We want it on zero. Maybe a little bit more, like four. And six. Yeah, and then we can add sparks and whatever. But this is honestly extra work, right? I I just wanted to show you how the interaction is with the with the dynamic parameter, right? So, for example, we could create another parameter over here. Let me see if my hand allows me. Okay. Um, right. So, for example, right, um, we're gonna 
multiply here. Um, or no, actually, this actually may be a bad idea. But um, what I'm trying to say is that we could add more uh, more parameters that we want to control. Like, for example, maybe the opacity on, on some kind of color uh, or maybe uh, whatever that you want on the material, right? You just hook it up to this dynamic parameter and you can control it through this dynamic node. But obviously you can have four max, right? And uh, let me see if I can show you quickly. Let me put this over here and then I'll, I'll put it back in. So what I did on that other material was, uh, I, I wanna show you quickly, hold on. You see it over here. Is this one? Yeah, it's this one, but I need a clearer one. Okay, maybe this works. So you can see how it is, how every um, layer, if you could say it like that, is spinning in, in a different direction, right? And uh, that's because uh, I use different textures and I put them on RGB so you can move them separately, right? In here, I'm moving only the green texture, in here only the blue, in here only the red, right? Well, no, no, this, this isn't the red. This is only the red, right? And uh, I also use dynamic. So here I'm modifying the power of the whole, so this is the power of the, let me see. Well, yeah, I'm just using that gradient trick I just showed you on this red one. And then for the green, I'm modifying the speed of the green of the green channel. And on the blue, I'm just modifying the speed of the blue channel, right? Uh, so yeah, I hope that this was useful for you. Obviously, you can make more complex uh, textures. I will highly encourage you to, and like this one so much. But I hope that you learned and that you liked the, the tutorial. Let me know if you want something else. Let me know if you didn't like it so much. Uh, if you have any suggestions, it will be much appreciated. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.